Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to create a bootable DOS USB drive. Now you may ask why would you want to do that? Well, uh, a lot of people need to run legacy DOS programs and they don't have a floppy disk drive in their computer or uh, they have a floppy disk drive in their computer, it's not working or they don't have a floppy disk to do it with. So this is a much simpler option. You get to create a bootable DOS USB drive and you have the, uh, the, the bonus part that the USB drive is not 1.44 uh, megabytes. It's a lot larger. So you can put a lot larger DOS programs on it. It can also be used to flash a BIOS in DOS as well. And I'll show you where to put the files to actually access them off the USB drive so you can run them. And in my case, I'm, in my case, I'm not going to use a uh, BIOS program. I'm just going to use a simple DOS shareware program and I'll show you where to put those files to make that work as well. First thing you're going to need obviously is a USB uh, drive. I like the SanDisk drives, but uh, today I'm just going to be using a normal um, one gig USB thumb drive that I had kicking around. Now if you need a thumb drive, this is a great value at uh, Amazon. It's a 16 gig uh, SanDisk Cruiser and it has, uh, it's sorry, and you can get it for $8.99. Pretty good deal. Like I said, you're gonna need that. So first thing we're gonna do is plug the USB drive into our machine. I've already done that. Then we're gonna, gonna go to our Windows Explorer or File Manager, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, we're we'll scroll down to computer. Now yours may be expanded or not, but if it isn't, just double click on it or click on it and it will expand. Now you'll see that I have a multi-boot uh, uh, drive in here and that's my USB drive. I'm going to format it to, to clear it out. Basically, you should always format your thumb drive prior to uh, doing any kind of boot drive that you're going to make because a, you want to make sure that the drive is the thumb drive is working correctly, especially if you're going to uh, be flashing a BIOS. Uh, so let's do that. Just right click it, choose format, and you should uncheck the quick format and do a slow long format on this because it will actually tell you if the drive is healthy. If you can do a full slow format on your drive, then more than likely there's nothing wrong with your thumb drive. If you can't do one, then there's something wrong with your thumb drive and you should basically get another one to do this and try this again. Notice here that it says create an MS-DOS startup disk and that Windows does not give you the option to do that on this drive because it's, it knows it's a USB thumb drive. So uh, this is why I'm making the video because you can do this. So I'm just going to click quick format here because I already know my thumb drive is good. And it says it will erase all the data on the drive. So understand when you're formatting your drive, you're wiping it out. So hit OK. And as you can see, that's a fairly fast process in my case. But again, do the slow one at least once before doing this. I'm just going to clear this out. Call it a one gigabyte and a USB. That way I'll know what it is. Actually, I'll just hit, I'll do it again. It'll happen quickly here. Yeah, so I formatted it twice because I wanted the volume label change. So close it out. Now you see that I have an E drive that says one gig USB. Next step, I'll just minimize this. You need to get a, the software that's going to create this uh, DOS boot disk. So my favorite software for this is called Yummy, Y-U-M-I. So just do a search for that, a Google search for that, and you'll find it, and you'll get this uh, Yummy multi-boot USB creator. So click on that. And then scroll down to about uh, halfway or two-thirds of the way down, and you'll see a download Yummy link here. So we're going to click on that and you have the option to save the file. So hit save the file and put it where you'd like. I put mine in the download directory under a folder called yummy. So you put it where you need to put it and remember where you put it so you can get it. And as you can see, I've already downloaded it just to make this video a little quicker. Click save here and download the file. It's a very short file anyway, but regardless, just click save and uh, know that I've already done that and then just uh, follow along with me next. You've saved the file. Now you need to run the file. The next thing we're going to do is go back to our uh, Windows Explorer and then to our download directory. Mine's right there. Then we're going to go to the yummy directory here. And then we're going to click on the yummy 2.017 file we just downloaded. Okay, so double click that. And uh, I'm getting a user account access control question here. You're probably not going to see that. Just I'm just going to click yes on that. If you get it, click uh, click yes. And then you get this option, uh, license agreement. Of course, we're going to agree to that because we need to get 
the program to run. Now this program does not install, it just runs. It's, that's one of the nice things about it. So here we're going to get select your drive letter for USB device. Well, we know it's over here and that it's E drive. So back to it. And so we we'll click here and it, it automatically detects that. So we're going to hit E on this. 1 gig USB. So, but make sure that you're doing this on the right drive. It might not get it right on your in your case, okay? So you have other options like show all drives, which will show you all your drives that are on your machine. And, you know, again, a couple more here to format or view in, uh, distros, but we're not going into that here. So next we're going to select the distribution. The distribution is going to be called FreeDOS, and that's what we're going to put onto the thumb drive. So click on the down arrow button and it gives you a huge list of uh, programs to down, download and sorry to install here but we're going to go to system tools as you can see right there and then we're going to go down to free dos and then it says balder image so that's what we want then it down here it says browse and select your balder 10 image well we don't have the balder 10 10 image yet that's why it's all red here so what we're going to do is we're going to click this link here where it says visit Phoenix Balder homepage. And that'll take you to the download link uh, for the DOS uh, program. So click on that. And then you'll see uh, the Phoenix Balder page here. And you'll see that there's two options. There's an IMZ. You don't want that because that's a compressed format. We want the image file. So just click on the balder10.img file. And it's a very small file, 1.4 four megabytes it says which is about the size of a floppy of course you get the option here to save it so we're going to do that click OK and as you can see I've already down downloaded it it's right there um, so just for brevity's sake just click on save and wherever you you put it remember because you're going to need it in a minute so I'm just going to hit cancel here close this out and now you'll see that uh, sorry now we'll go here to browse and we'll go to my download directory again because that's where I installed it so downloads and there you'll see the balder image so click on that so we're selecting that hit open and then you see that now under C downloads I have balder image and it's green so the program is now ready to go and it prompts you by by giving you the create button so click on create it tells you what it's going to do it's going to overwrite the MBR so on and so forth just make sure you're doing this on the right drive again and click on yes now it's a very small program so this will happen quickly okay uh, installation is complete click on next uh, it says, would you like to add any more ISOs or distros on your E drive? Well, we're not adding any more programs to this, so we're going to hit no. And then you click on finish. So let's go back to your file browser. And you'll see that it now relabeled the drive as it, the E drive to multi boot. So double click that. And there you have all, two folders that uh, it created. Next, I'm going to show you how to put uh, software on this drive and where to put it so that you can save it and uh, run it when you get into uh, the DOS environment. So I'm just going to pick um, a free DOS games. There's lots of free DOS games out there. And I'm going to choose uh, free DOS games, download one of the shareware programs so that we know we're totally OK. And let's choose a Tetris style program. You can choose whatever you'd like. And I'm going to choose the Acid Tet Tetris. So there's the link for it there. I'll put the link for this, uh, all these so all this software also, in the uh, uh, video description. So I'm just going to click on that. And it says, ready to download your free game. So click here to download. Now, I take no responsibility for what this software does to your machine. I'm just showing you something for uh, the sake of you understanding where you need to place the software on the USB drive to access it. So, okay, click Save here. And it's going to go into the uh, uh, download directory. So hit save again. There we go. So now back to our file browser. And we're going to go to the download directory. And it was called Saba zip. And there it is. And it's a zip file, so we need to extract it. 
So just right click it and hit extract all and we're going to browse where it's going to go and we want to extract it onto the thumb drive that we just created. So it's multi -boot, boot E and we want to put it right on the root directory, not in any of the subdirectories, right on the root directory. Okay, hit OK. So it's going to be the E drive. Extract it. And now I've put the uh, software where it belongs. Now if you're using a doing a BIOS uh, flash and you needed to put the BIOS on on the uh, USB thumb drive to do the BIOS, well then you do basically the same procedure. Just extract it to the E colon drive, right to the root directory. So next I'm going to reboot the computer with this thumb drive in the machine and uh, show you how to access it or the boot menu on my HP. It's different on different computers. So I'll put a list of the different commands that you may need on booting to reach your USB thumb drive. Here we are at my boot screen for my HP laptop and it tells me press escape for the startup menu. Yours may be different. It could be delete, it could be F9, F2, whatever your computer is, uh, you know, choose that option. Uh, I, set, I put a list of these on this video already so you can see which options are available. So I'm just going to hit escape here and it'll give me my startup menu. Okay, so startup menu gives me uh, five choices and the one choice I want is the uh, boot device option. So I want to be able to change the boot device option. So, you know, you may be lucky and your machine may just boot off the USB drive if it's installed on, you know, if it's plugged into your computer. Uh, I'm just going to choose here F9 and that gives me my boot manager, which gives me the option to choose what I want to boot from. So I'm going to hit generic flash disk. That's my one gig drive with free DOS on it. And then I'm going to hit enter. Then uh, you get your yummy multi-boot USB menu. And this has got a timer on it for 25, 24 seconds. It doesn't matter. Once you hit the, the, your up or down arrow keys to scroll to your selection, that timer goes away. So we're going to scroll down to the system tools and hit enter. Then scroll down to free DOS, Balder 10, and hit enter again. And that, now you get the Balder 10 menu with uh, six, or sorry, seven different options on how to load Windows. And you also, if you saw there, you had a timeout going on there. So just hit your up and down arrow key or side arrow key. Hitting your keyboard stops the automatic um, boot to the actual uh, free DOS that is number three. So by, by default, you're going to end up on number three. Now I know uh, in my case that that will cause the um, my computer to lock up. It doesn't like option number three. Well, that's why there's seven options because you, you can choose from all of those to get the one that works for you. Certain software works better uh, or, or worse depending on which option you choose. It's a matter of experimentation on your part. Here I'm just going to choose the start free DOS for 386 plus high men plus EMM 386 because I know it works. Now another th thing to note here is that the CD-ROM can be loaded by running the load CD bat. So I'll show you how to do that. And what that does is it allows you to, uh, you know, load your CD-ROM so you can load stuff off your CD-ROM as well. So, you know, I'll just run it for you. I'm, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to show you how to run it. So now I've chosen number four, so I'm going to hit enter here. And then I end up at my A prompt. So first off, I'm going to just load. Uh, actually, I'm just going to do a D, uh, directory here. So type in D-I-R. And that lists everything that's on your USB key uh, and in your, your utilities. So here you can also use a, a forward slash P switch and it will allow you to, um, you know, basically scroll through page by page till you, uh, you know, find what you want or see what you want here. But basically it's got all, all the tools there. And as you can see there, load CD bat so that's what we're going to i'm just going to run that and all the way the only way the way to run programs in in dos is just by typing in the, the program and usually the files that uh, run are either dot bats like or batch files as, as you can see down here or um, exes which are uh, executable so either one of those will all you have to do is type the file in and it'll run so here it is running right um, and that's how you load the CD-ROM drive. 
Now I don't have a CD in here, so you know I just wanted you to show, I wanted to show you how to run that program. So we loaded a program onto this key, and uh, it's just a, a shareware DOS game. Now if you you may have been uh, you may want to use this to flash a BIOS, so you. Uh, dump the BIOS files onto this drive like I showed you with the game. You just drop them into the E drive and they show up. Well, in order to access those files, you need to type in C colon and backslash. And if once you hit that, you hit enter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> C colon. A little rusty on my DOS. There. And that changes you over to the C drive. Now, here you type in DIR again and you'll see the programs that we installed or we loaded up. And you'll see a bunch here, but uh, you, know, you know that the only ones that actually will work are the EXEs and the BATs. So there's a setup bat file there. So I, I'm, I'm gonna uh, assume that the, this game that I loaded in here, the Tetris game, has a setup. So I'm just gonna type in setup and dot BAT. I could have just ran setup, it would have run anyway, but I, I like to put the full syntax in. So setup.bat, enter, and ta-da, I'm running the super acid uh, uh, block uh, attack, which is a Tetris type game. And uh, at this point, you just select what you want to do here, and uh, you'll see it blinking up and down. I'm just going to hit play game to show you that it works. And we go through splash green here or several splash greens well as you can see I'm in a DOS environment disk operating system is an operating system so there we are uh, I'm into the super asset block attack here I'm just gonna hit new game what the heck and then you'll see the Tetris game begin so that's how you boot off a DOS USB key and run a program from it. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.